This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello and welcome to a special NVP Network podcast. Ricky Widmer here along with Brandon Swanson. Hey everybody, let's get rocking and rolling. And this is basically going to be a ranting and raving podcast. If you're a Bulls fan, you're going to want to listen into this one because we're going to talk about the situation of the Chicago Bulls, both me and Brandon in the city of Chicago, showing a little bit of frustrations after the Bulls were bounced from the playoffs by the Cleveland Cavaliers and just, I don't know how it happened, Brandon. We were up 2-1 in the series and then we lose three straight. Well, I know how it happened. Um, What happened was LeBron James and LeBron James knows how to win basketball games and Chicago Bulls know how to break your heart. Uh, And I think that that's what it comes down to in a sense. I'm glad you brought up his name. Not going to speak of who because I can't say his name for which he is evil, but the game winner that he hit, yeah, I'm only going to use pronouns when I talk about him, but uh, <laughs> the game winner that he hit in that game four shouldn't have been a game winner, should have been a game tying three. You want to know why I say that? Because earlier in the fourth quarter, Timmy Ma- Timothy Mozgov said, you know what, Derek, you're going to drive to the basket, I'm just going to, bam, hand on wrist, refs are going to go, no foul because I play for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, was that also the same game where David Blatt was on the yeah, court? Yeah, that was the timeout one. Yeah, the, the phantom timeout. So that was timeout. two things. Okay. So this is the way I see it. If you're not even going to think about that timeout, Mozgov, foul on Rose. Rose being the foul shooter he is, hits two. We lost by two, so that game winner should have been the game tire. We should have at least had overtime. Then on top of it, you have Coach Blatt calling a timeout and the refs not even acknowledging it. We should have had Chris Webber 2.0. And then wasn't the ball out of bounds it with 0.8 seconds, what they said, 1.5 seconds? Yeah. I mean, honestly, this is what it comes down to, though. It well, comes down I to mean, it comes down to when the Chicago Bulls lost that game and it went to 2-2. Two, two two. That was it. They didn't need to play any more games. They didn't need to. And in Bulls fans' mind, you know, it, it shouldn't have... That we game knew was hard to watch. What was going to happen from there on? That game was so they hard. They were going to gonna watch. lose in Cleveland, and they did. And then they were going to come home to Chicago, and they were going to maybe win just to lose again in Cleveland. That's how it was going to go in our minds. It went even worse. Even worse. And it's not, it's a frustrating depression for Chicago Bulls fans because that was it. For a long time. For a long time. And that was potentially it for Tibbs. Well, and I mean, I'm. we're going to get to that. The big thing is, should the Bulls keep Tom Thibodeau or should they let him go? And I'm going to just read you so far his, not his win losses overall. Overall, I'll say this, 255 wins to 139 losses since coming to the Bulls in 2010. But here's the more important stat line. Yes, he has made the playoffs each year while being the head coach of the Chicago Bulls, but here's what we have. Lost in the conference finals, 2010-2011. Lost in the first round. Lost in the semis. First round, semis. Since that first year, we have not been to the conference finals. That, to me, is the bigger thing. Yes, we can make the playoffs right now, but we can't get over that hump into the conference finals. We can't do it. Is it because of the coach, or is it because we don't have the right players to do it? It's not Thibodeau himself. Here's what it is. It is the relation, the relationship between Thibodeau and the front office, Foreman and Paxson, that they're just in a riff. Tom Thibodeau, to me, feels like that kid where he's about 18, maybe 19, and mom and dad are still trying to, like, control his life a little bit. And he's just like, Mom, Dad, get out of here. Let me do what I want. I'm an adult. Let me run my life. That's what it feels like. The front office wants their hand in decisions, how the team is run. Hey, maybe give uh, Meritich a little bit more minutes. Tom Thibodeau goes, no, this is my team. Let me, I'm the coach. Let me run it. And that's the root of the problem. 
And I, me as a Bulls fan, you know what? If that can't be fixed, then the front office needs to get a guy in there that'll be their guy. If it gets us a championship, I don't care. It worked for Phil Jackson. That's all I'm going to say. Phil Jackson is a uh, statement all of itself because he's one of the best coaches ever. But if it worked for him, why not just find your next Phil Jackson? Easier said than done. You don't just go out there and find a Phil Jackson. You don't a have diamond in the rough. You, you you don't have those guys just sitting out there, and 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 you have to look now. I mean, who's really out there for mm-hmm. the for the Bulls to get? I mean, who is who's the best? You have to say who not only who is the best guy that they could get, but who's going to be better than Thibodeau? I mean, I, I I think that that's the biggest thing. I mean, we have a coach right now that has a ton of passion, loves what he does, cares about his players, and pushes them to more limits than they want to. It's the to. same situation that the Thunder were in this year with Scotty Brooks. This was the first time. They didn't make the playoffs, so it was a little bit easier for them to push this button. But Scotty Brooks, to me, is the Coach Thibodeau of the OKC Thunder, where they've been going to the playoffs consistently, they've been getting there consistently, but they haven't been able. They got to the finals once, couldn't beat LeBron. But they can't get over that hump ever since that finals. And with the Bulls, this is what I'm talking about. The 2011 playoffs, that was the year we beat Indiana in five. We beat Atlanta in six. We went up against the Miami Heat in uh, LeBron's first year in Miami, and they beat us in five games. It's like, okay, conference semifinals, it was the Heat. The next year, 2012, that was the Derrick Rose injury year where we lost in six in the first round to the 76ers. And that was the year that the Heat went on beating the Thunder in the finals. 2013, that was when we lost to yet again Miami in five games in the second round. Then 2014, we lost in the first round to the Washington Wizards, which I was sitting there going, really? The Wizards? We lost to the Wizards? And then you have this year where we beat the Bucks in six games. We have that great game six where we run them out of the court, say, bye bye go back to Milwaukee. Oh, wait, guess what? We're in Milwaukee for that game. And then we lose the way we do against Cleveland. Well, I, I don't want to say it because I know you're going to get upset. But you, you said all those. And for the most part, who was... The person that they couldn't get past. La bitch. Yeah, I said it. But I'm just saying. Yeah. And and, and they, they've talked about it on ESPN. They've talked about it on all the sports networks. What is it that the Chicago Bulls just cannot beat LeBron James teams in the playoffs? What is it? And they couldn't beat a LeBron James team where he had a terrible night. Kevin Love was already out. Kyrie was was hurt. And they let Matthew Dellavedova, that piece of crap, beat us. Because we can't we can't shoot the ball. We can't make shots. Well, that night we couldn't we couldn't shoot. We couldn't play offense. We couldn't roll, play defense. And if there the was series. special teams in basketball, they wouldn't have been able to play that either. J. It J. was Smith, terrible. J.R. Smith killed us too. J.R. Smith, there was a spot in one of the games, I think it was game four. Yeah, it was game four because it was the LeBron James winner game. But even J.R. Smith was cold. And I'm like, why? We got to make a basket. Because in that game, that shot should have never happened. We were up by, what, 11 or 13 going into the fourth quarter. And because we couldn't hit the the side of a barn with the basketball, we go ahead and give LeBron. LeBron James should have never had the chance to hit that game winner because we should have been up by 13, 15, maybe even 20. Well, then what's the problem? What is the root of that problem we don't have for the Chicago Bulls? Here's the root of the problem. Coach Thibodeau, there was one of the assistants they were talking about on ESPN is a defensive guy, and he's Thibodeau's guy, and Thibodeau's like, I want him. Well, they got him out of town. Thibodeau's replacing guys with defensive-minded guys. We need an offensive-minded guy to go with Thibodeau where it's like, you can preach defense, this guy can preach offense, and we can win games. Well, or we just got to get rid of Joakim Noah because I feel like after the series, if he can't 
If you can't take the ball, there was one point in the game where he had a wide open lane to the basket, didn't have the confidence, and just passed it off. I'm like, just go up and dunk. You're joking Noah. Yeah, Ricky, I I, I was actually just going to say something about him that this series, something seemed off about him. He didn't seem like a, a Joakim Noah that was get him out of playing town. his usual style of basketball. He get wasn't. Him, get him out. He wasn't playing with uh, an intensity. With he wasn't aggressive. He would throw things right off the backboard that made it look like you had just done it. I, I mean, it was bad. Hey, I'm not that bad. I've seen you play, buddy. <laughs> it's bad. But the thing is, though, is that it just didn't look like him. And I think that in that game six, the thing that upset me the most out of everything else, yeah, they play like crap. The Bulls did not play well. But the thing that upset me the most in that game is that they didn't want to win. They just wanted the game to be over. And you could tell. You want to know why I'm always, like, in this entire podcast, why I'm saying get rid of Noah? We don't need him now. The reason being is we can trade him. He still has some value. And I feel like Gasol and Gibson, that can be our, that can be our front court. That can be our five and our four, is Paw and Gibson. And then with Noah not being there, maybe Mer- Mericic can have a little bit more time. The only thing Nico needs to work on, though, is his defense. He's a defensive liability, and that's why— You don't you, like the clothesline defense? No. You you saw Jimmy Butler. There was one time where they had to make a switch, and Mericic just looks at Butler, and Butler points at LeBron like, come on, get on him. That that's your guy, and you just strong point from Butler because Nico didn't know where to go. Well, I think that's a pro I mean, you talk about Thibodeau preaching defense and being this defensive guy. Why aren't his guys then all on the same page of we need to be better defensively? I mean, where's that? And we unfortunately didn't have that great defense, especially later on in the series. I mean, James Jones. James Jones, not the football James Jones, who's now irrelevant because he plays yeah. for the Raiders, but I, I think that he was able to do well. The Bulls were notorious. You mean the James Jones that follows LeBron wherever he goes? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. But he was, uh, the Bulls were notorious for, and you know, apparently the Bulls are supposed to do, uh, cover the corner three really well. Well, they did pretty poorly against the wide open wing three. I mean, that so many times they would just kick it out wide open three on the wing. I'll tell you this. Tom Thibodeau should be thankful of one thing and one thing only. That A, Steve Kerr has a job, and B, the Warriors are pretty damn good. Because if Steve Kerr was either A, not coaching, or the Warriors were not in the playoffs, because guess what? They didn't make the playoffs in this bizarre scenario. The first thing the Bulls are doing is contacting Steve Kerr to be their head coach. Because right now the biggest thing is we need to shoot the ball, and I bet you that Reinsdorf would be like, hey, this guy played for us. He knows how to shoot, can teach us how to shoot. Let's get Kerr. But to me, if we get rid of Thibodeau, and it's going to have to be through a trade, and right now people are throwing in the Pelicans to be that team to trade for Tom Thibodeau, much like the Clippers traded for Doc with the Celtics, I know, Mark, you brought up, and I'm going to leave the name for you to bring up, because you're going to bring him up, college coach. But to me, the two guys in the NBA that have experience that I feel, one I would like, one I would not, is Scotty Brooks and Mark Jackson. Well, I think Mark Jackson should still be coaching. He shouldn't have he even should. had this. We talked about this before we started the podcast. Is that and I would like Mark he, Jackson as the coach of the Bulls. He should have never been out of coaching. I think that was a poor decision. Scotty Brooks, made. I would hate because it's like, great, we took a lesser version of Thibs. Lesser version of Thibodeau? Well, you know, I think... Bring up the, bring up the college guy because I'm leaving him for you. I was just going to say... Leaving a good old Fred for you. Fred Hoiberg 
is the head coach right now. Is he going to want to leave Iowa? Of, of Iowa State. Yeah. And he recently just signed a 10-year, $20 million deal. 10-year, $20 million deal. Is he going to want to leave that to coach the NBA? Oh, hell, I wouldn't. Um, I, I just don't. And especially especially for a Bulls team, it's, you're not mm-hmm. like Steve Kerr. He walked into a great situation there at Golden State. Yeah, you had I the mean, Splash they've Brothers. They've got great Talent. I bet you Mark Jackson, the Warriors are the same thing with Mark Jackson. I would put money on it because I think it's the players more than Steve Kerr's coaching style. Steve Kerr helps because I feel like he is a good coach, but it's hard to lose with that team. Well, I think that if you look at what the Bulls have, what the Bulls have. Okay. Hoiberg is going in, would be going into a situation. uh, Again, a. Theoretical mm-hmm. situation. The Bulls, I mean, they have talent. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But then you have to look at injury concerns. With Derrick Rose, you want to believe hey, this that season, he is this season back was pretty healthy. Good. You want to believe that he is back healthy and he is good to go. But then you also have to look at, I mean, Paul Gasol, he's not the youngest guy. I mean, he was hurt in the playoffs. That really hurt the Bulls. Mm-hmm. You have to look at Joe Kim Noah. How much is he really going to give you, especially on the offensive side? If the Bulls lose Jimmy Butler to free agency, it is. We're I'm just not. saying, but if they do, it is all down the tubes for Chicago. It is because Jimmy Butler, and I'll go on a limb and say this, is the new best player on the Bulls. Outside, I mean, he is better than Derrick Rose overall as a player. And, and, I, and I'll say that. I'll make that claim because he showed us this season. And I am looking at our at most of our top paid players, and Rose and Noah have the most at 18 mil, 12 mil. The next guy is Tab get Taj Gibson. So I mean, we do have some money to get Jimmy Butler, but hey, if we trade Noah. That can open up some money if you need to for Jimmy Butler. Here are our free agents for the Bulls this season. Mike Dunleavy. I wouldn't mind signing him back if he wants to sign cheap. I like him. I, I think like he would Dunleavy. sign cheap. I like, I like his grit that he showed against the Bucks. I like that he can shoot the three. Jimmy Butler, he's got to resign. We got to get him back. We can't let him go to L.A. Because guess what, Bulls fans? The Lakers are preparing a max deal to offer Jimmy Butler. But guess what, Ricky? The Lakers don't have anything of substance to say, hey, want to come play with Kobe? He's playing on one leg. You got Julius Randle. Don't forget, he was he got injured early. He's going to have a good rookie season because he didn't get a rookie season because he was injured. I'm, I, but I'm saying I don't think that the Lakers no, have know. anything I know. more than what the, uh, the, the Lakers could, however, aren't as good as the Bulls. However, that could change this Tuesday if they get the number one overall pick. Doesn't change for me if I'm Jimmy Butler. I look at that. You can give me a max mm-hmm. contract or a max deal. I better be. And if, if I'm Butler, I'm expecting that the Bulls are going to give me the best that they've got. Our other two free agents, Nazi, Muhammad, I, whatever. He's so cheap. He I could, could stay. Yeah, I could go. care less. And then the last one, Aaron Brooks. The reason I don't care if Aaron goes is because we can draft. There's point guards in this draft where we can find one to be the number two. Plus, the Bulls are always the team, it seems like now. Aaron was the lesser extent to this. Let's just pick a free agent. They come in. They are, they're they a star. Oh, look at that. Nate, you're off to here. Oh, look at uh, what was his name. Um, He used to play for the Bobcats before he came to us. Um, blanking on his name. Played for us last year. Not this past year, but the year before. He went off and just signed a... Nice contract after playing for us. And then you had Aaron Brooks this year. But Aaron Brooks, like I said, lesser extent than a guy like Nate Robinson. I like Brooks. I, I would actually give him a little bit more to encourage him to stay. I, I like I, I, I like him. I think he's a good fit with the Bulls. Um, I think, though, that the, the looking at it, priority one is Butler. Priority number one is Jimmy Butler because if you lose him, However, you got a lot of it. you got a lot of people staying. You do. You do. I, and, and I think that's important. I, I think that your thought to try and trade DJ Aug- or DJ Augustine, that's who I was thinking. DJ of. Augustine. I think that your thought, though, to try and trade Joachim Noah, 
I think you're a little off base with that one. I don't think that does. I think that does more harm than good for the Chicago Bulls. I think you just have to get Noah right, and in, in an off season, we'll hopefully do that. Uh, that's uh, I haven't seen him play like he played in the in the in the playoffs and in and in that series with Cleveland. You know who I want to see more of? Dougie McBuckets. That you just want to see him. Let's get not him, be on the bench. Well, I mean, let's get him going. We were so hyped. When we drafted him, and this is kind of another criticism with uh, Thibodeau, where it's like, doesn't like to play the rookies. No, I was talking with a, a friend of mine the other night, and he said the exact same thing. He will not play rookies. He yeah. will not do it. And, and the, I mean, with with Nico, it was kind of a different situation. Wasn't really a rookie. He's a real. He's a rookie, but he's not. He's been playing overseas, but. Even with Nico, his minutes, there's people saying, hey, get him some more minutes. And I think Thibodeau was like, you know what, he's still a, he's a rookie on our team. Yeah, I think the problem is with that is you, is you look at it, and the Bulls needed all hands on deck. Well, they didn't have any more hands because he wants to push all the guys, all the starters, like I said earlier, beyond the limits. He wants to push him beyond the limits and tire them out and tire them out. When Thibodeau, he could be playing these other guys yeah, to Thibodeau give him a break. Thibodeau is not a guy like, I'm going to bring in uh, Kevin McHale, where he, in the game, James Harden, you're not working for us. Hit the bench. The bench guys come in. and a half minutes mm-hmm. he sat him. He was 5 of 20 mm-hmm. from the field, and he was able to do that because he had reinforcements. Yep. Bulls well, not don't. just that. In the, I know they lost the game, but... I was watching some of the Warriors Memphis and the um with even with Memphis they were in the game because their bench was providing for them and in the playoffs the bench is huge when you have to take a guy like Derrick Rose out someone's got to come in and give significant minutes and for the Bulls I'm telling you that fourth quarter going back to the Labitch game winner um that fourth quarter was the end of the series because we were up by 13. We couldn't hit the broad side of a barn and we lost. And after that, it was like, whatever, we can't do anything. We can't make a shot game over series over. Not like Paul Pierce though. LeBron didn't call series and that's why he won. I think that with the bulls and, and not only that game, but with a lot of them, they just, they would have these leads, and then in Lose a blink them. of an eye, they're down by a point. As a good defensive team, too. That's, that's a defensive head coach. I mean, it doesn't help when you're not scoring points. There were times where the Bulls were making stops and getting steals. Like, Taj Gibson was very good defensively for us on some plays. But when you can't, it all comes down to when you can't score, you're not going to win. It's simple. You got to put the ball in the hoop to win the game. And I know you're sitting there going, well, Ricky, duh. But that's how it is. Can't do, win if you can't score. Do you think the Bulls have enough offensive guys? Do you think they have enough offensive weapons on their team? Do we need to go yes. out and get more offense? Yes, we do. Another thing that hurt us in that Cleveland series that we have yet to bring up, Paul was injured. He was on the bench. Played good early, got injured. We didn't see him till game six, till it was too late kind of a thing. Yeah, I, I think that Ch- Chicago, I, I think they need another offensive guy. And I'm not talking what coach kind of an offensive right, right guy? here. I, I'm talking another shooter. I'm talking another shooter who can be there and, if okay, if Rose is off, okay. You know, if Butler's off, okay. I, I We need another guy. I don't know who that would be. And Are I don't you know talking what we'd like have to, maybe free agent guy. I'm talking. I'm talking in, in free agency. I'm talking through a trade. I'm draft. I'm talking through the draft. Anything, but I think we need another offensive guy. Are we only going to get that though through a Thibodeau trade? Right now, probably, but I don't even know if we would get that because I'm trying to think of what. So when when Doc left, he they. The Clippers, I think, gave up a first round pick. I'm gonna look it up. And then I think for Jason Kidd, he got two they got two second rounders mm-hmm. for him. So Thibodeau, I think, is ext- 
much more valuable than Kid. Okay. And is up where Doc Rivers this is. This is an article from the Los Angeles Times from two years ago when it happened. It said Clippers will send Celtics first round pick. Um da-da. and then they also got the um Kevin Garnett was involved in that deal. <laughs> This doesn't tell me what I want. I'm going to look it up. But yeah, that was Jason Kidd. I forgot he was just traded. He was in a coaching trade too. And it's kind of weird in principle that we're now getting to a fact where, do you know in any other sport where you can say, you know, let's trade the coach? No, not at all. It'd be the weirdest thing. Uh, you know, can we trade Robin Ventura for Joe Madden? I mean, that wouldn't happen because it'd be uneven and unfair. Mm-hmm. And the, the PlayStation wouldn't allow it to happen. Um, but I, I, I think that, it's crazy what we've gotten to in the NBA when okay. you can trade your coaches. Here it is. Clippers sent Boston 2015 unprotected first round pick. LA has agreed to pick up three years on uh, Doc Rivers. So all the Clippers did was send a first round pick. That at the time, you got to think this was June of 2013. So that pick for Doc. We're going to be talking about next week on the primetime podcast because it's the unprotect, unprotected pick that's going to happen this year. So if you're the Bulls, at the very least, you should be able to trade Thibodeau to the Pelicans for a first round pick in two years. At the very least, maybe a little bit more. It might be next year could be a first rounder in 2017 and a shooter. Could be anything like that. I I think that th- the Bulls have to get. I mean, if that's what they want to do, which I'm sure that's what they want to do, they've got to get a first rounder. They've got to get a first rounder because that's what Tom Thibodeau is worth. He's worth a first round pick, and and I think that the Bulls, when they go on their coaching search, they're going to be looking for a coach who is going to do exactly what the front office wants him to do. They're gonna, a, they're gonna look for a guy who will be compliant. That's for sure. This is a joke, but uh, we could trade uh, Coach Thibodeau for uh, the Turkish delight, a sheik and destroy. We can get Omir Sheik back uh, in the Windy City. Brandon, you're shaking your head at me. No, you don't no. like that joke. It's a joke. That's here, exactly what it is. Here are, and this is based off av- average salaries on the Pelicans, going from top to bottom. Eric Gordon, Tyreek Evans. Uh, Drew Holiday, Ryan Anderson, Omira Sheik, Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis only makes about five point seven mil a year. Still That's on it. that rookie Chump contract. Change. Still on that rookie contract. But if we can get a guy, I'm thinking, hey, maybe the Bulls just try a straight up deal. We'll give you Thibodeau, give us Drew Holiday. However, Drew Holiday is what ten mil a year, so you would probably have to give up Noah too. But would the Pelicans want Noah? They already have uh, Anthony Davis and Ryan Anderson with Amira Sheik. They could easily move Amira Sheik because Noah is 10 times better than the Turkish Delight. Do you think that's where where Tibbs is going? It's the early indication. They're the team. And the reason why is they're the team that just fired. They made the playoffs, fired their head coach, fired Monty Williams. That's why everyone's going to talk about, like, we're talking the Pelicans right now. Maybe that's why the Bulls haven't made a move on Thibodeau. They're going to wait till after. They could wait till after the playoffs, see what other coaches get fired. Do you think the Bulls do a complete 180 and keep him? There's a chance. It could happen. Because, I mean, there is always the possibility of us getting a new coach and then we not make the playoffs. So maybe they're thinking, oh, with Thibodeau, maybe it's not Thibodeau. Maybe it's building a team to beat LeBron. I think it's building a team to have the intensity to go into any series and and play well. Because I want to be honest, knowing that we know now, and this all depends on, of course, they haven't made it to the NBA Finals. There was no way the Bulls were going to win the Finals this year. You know who's winning it all, right? Tell me who. The Warriors. You think so? Yeah, they're going to win it all. They're the best team. They're the most fun team to watch. They win games. Steph Curry is amazing on the basketball court. I mean, come on. He can hit 70-footers like they're nothing. 
at the buzzer without even flinching. But, I mean, they're just the best team. And I think if they go up against the Cavs, they're just going to run Cleveland right out of the gym. To me, when I was thinking Western Conference teams that the Bulls can beat, we had to have hoped for, like, the Clippers, the Rockets, the like the Atlanta-Washington series. I was kind of hoping for, okay, if the Cavs win, I want the Hawks to win because they have the best chance to beat LeBron. But if the Bulls win, I want the Wizards. With a hobbling John Wall, all we got to do is take care of Paul Pierce and we'll win. Basically what you got to do, take care of, I mean, Bradley Beal, he is good, but the truth was what kept them in that series and almost kept them in that series if he would have let the ball go maybe a second sooner in that game six. That was a ridiculous play. Maybe a half a second. Yeah, maybe a half a second sooner. That was tough. That was tough. But I, I think that when you when you get back to the Chicago Bulls and you assess their situation, and it's a it's a big situation to assess because you're assessing assessing coaching, you're assessing the mm-hmm. players, because it's it, it's it never comes down to just one in my mind. And right it never now comes down to just the coach or just the players. And right now we're in the overreaction period. Yeah. We have just been knocked out of the playoffs. We're dealing with this defeat. Well, and we're in the pissed off period, and we're all in the just. I think the best tweet from one of our friends that we know from college that we went to school with, best tweet I saw, just trade the entire team for Anthony Davis. Just trade everyone for Anthony Davis. That's it. That's all you need. And as I think I said to you before, we would need a little bit more than that. I'm going to throw this out there. What if the Bulls try to send Thibodeau? Thibodeau, Noah, and an unprotected first-round pick to the Pelicans for Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis. Oh, my gosh, Ricky. That's so stupid. Why would you even say there's no way that would ever happen? There's no way that would ever, ever happen. Do the Bulls try to push that, though? Say, hey, we're going to give you a star center and a good coach for a a guy who could start but could back up Rose. And bring, I would actually like Anthony Davis in Chicago. Because guess what? He's from Chicago. Yeah, well, guess what? You are in dreamland. You like Joakim Noah better than Anthony Davis? No, I'm just saying that it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The the reason that the Pelicans would want Thibodeau is because he would be then, they would pair him with a guy who's going to be the best player in the NBA soon, Anthony Davis. Not going to pair him with Eric Gordon, the guy you're paying the most money to? I mean, you look at no, no one. Okay, I guess I shouldn't say I'm, no one. I'm but talking, I, 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 I'm, I'm talking with bull goggles on, talking with red goggles. I'm seeing red right now. I get it I'm, from I'm, a fan's point of view. I'm, I'm just saying that that's it. That is a that is a wild claim that I don't think the Bulls would ever even think of. And then you bring in Fred Hoidberg. I, I think that or that, Mark Jackson. I, <sighs> You you have to you have to look at the guys out there that are would even be available to go get it as a coach. You have to look at them, and then you have to see how interested they really are in the job. Like Hoiberg, he's set to make sixteen million dollars over the next eight years there in Iowa. Why would he want to leave that? His family's in Iowa. Everything's there in Iowa. There's really no reason to leave unless he wanted to get some different scenery, which I wouldn't doubt him. I, I wouldn't be upset with him for that because Iowa is a very boring place to look at. But I think that in the end, the Bulls have to look at how do they make themselves better than what they are now. They don't want to go backwards. They don't want to go backwards. That's the biggest thing is you don't want to get rid of Thibodeau, get rid of these other guys and try and bring in something new because, you know what, this one's going to work. This one's going to get us over the hump. And then we fall short of where we were this year. I mean, going backwards is the worst possible thing that you could do right now, especially if you're going to make a change. Here are the more notable unrestricted free agents that we could see. You want me to read off the top five? Yes, please. LaMarcus Aldridge, Marcus Gasol, Tyson Chandler, Rajon Rondo, KG. Probably none of them might actually hit the court, like the actual free agency feel. But you know who I want to 
Because then I would say trade Noah and sign this guy. You know who I'm going to say? Say it. Marcus Gasol. I knew that. I Mark, knew that was it. Bring Mark and Paul together, baby. He's the same one I thought of. Mark and Paul in the same front court. Hell, I would even if if Lamarcus if Aldridge hit free agency and Portland said, you know, it's too much money. I'd say trade Noah, get Aldridge because we should have never traded. Looking back, and I know hindsight's everything. Should have never traded Aldridge. We should have drafted him and kept him. In hindsight, but that, I mean, going back, you, you do everything for a reason what about and you this? think you're doing it. I'm going to throw this out there. You said we need a backup to Derrick Rose for the right price. Do you bring Rajon in He was to work one. with his old coach in Thibodeau if you keep him? He's the only other one I would think of. Mark, him, him and Thibodeau Mark have a history. And Rajon. I mean, with everything with Rondo that happened in Dallas and Carlisle basically calling him a baby, a crybaby. I would think the only person, the only two people to be able to work with him are Doc Rivers and Thibodeau because they were on the staff when he was in Boston. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting if they try to do something like that, but I do. I, I just don't think, I think that people right now, they think that maybe Tom Thibodeau is the, is the, is the problem because that's what they've heard in the media. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the problem. I mean, you could take him away, and like you said earlier, Rick, you could take him away, put in someone new, and they could do worse. Then hey, what was the problem? You know what? I don't know why I didn't see this earlier, and I'm saying this with sarcasm. I'm saying that right now for those of you who cannot hear it through the microphone. I don't know why I didn't come up with this earlier. We got to bring back this guy played in Chicago. We got to bring him back. Carlos Boozer. The answer to all our problems. Right there, Carlos Boozer. Well, that's always been the problem. We got rid of him. Uh, I think that, you know, that was obviously uh, the biggest mistake we could have ever made because Carlos Boozer was uh, the best player that has been in Chicago in quite some. Yeah, that, it just, no, that that is a good one. I, I think it's no one understood that sarcasm. They they need to go to. I, I had to say that to was sarcasm because I know there's bound to be people typing at that keyboard, preparing their uh, comment in the comment section, calling me stupid. Oh, saying they'd be the saying Bulls worse than have that. have to get. Uh, Carlos Boozer back, but do I think Thibodeau's the problem? No, but like I said, if him and the front office cannot work and they cannot find a way to work to beat LeBron James, a change has to be made. Well, I think a change may be made just because it doesn't sound like of what we've heard in in the news stories and in and in all those uh, media reports is that him and the front office just can't work together on what's best for the Chicago It's kind of like a relationship where you've been in it for a while, but after a while, it's like, you know what? If it ain't working, it ain't working. Get out. If all you're doing is arguing, and this is not, you're not married, you're just dating. You're that couple that's uh, just arguing, you know what? If it ain't going to work, it ain't going to work. If it ain't worth fixing, get out. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it definitely sounds like there was a, a, de- a definite rift what about a buyout? between them. Do you think Thibodeau says, fine, buy me out? I'm, if you can't find a trader, just fine, buy me out. For what, for his $9 million? Just buy me out. Pay me my money now and I'll leave. I don't, I don't think the Bulls do that. That's not the smart move. No, that's money out of your pocket now when I would just say, screw it, we'll keep you and pay you. Yeah, I mean, there's. I think the bull, if the Bulls went with that idea, it'd be stupid. But that is going to do it for our special Bulls rant slash podcast. Definitely a rant. It was definitely a rant. We had to get this off our chest as Bulls fans. I know that other Bulls fans wanted to hear this discussion, but the discussion does not end here. This is where you go down in the comment section and you tell us what you think. What do you think needs to change for the Chicago Bulls to not even get back to the conference finals, to get back to the NBA finals. Because, Brandon, it has been a long time since the Chicago Bulls have played in the NBA finals. But that's going to do it for this special MVP Network podcast. You can go ahead, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Ricky Widmer. Brandon, this is the first time we're saying it, is at Young underscore Swan 19. Then you can follow MVP Network at Most Valuable Pod. But... This has been an MVP special. Thank you guys for listening. And as always, have a good day, everybody.
Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.